Hi, it's Johnny Marks. Thank you so much for checking out the Marks in the Morning podcast. Remember, you can listen to myself, Carrie Mack, and JP weekdays from 6 to 10 live on K92.3. Get out of bed. It's time to get your day started. This is Marks in the Morning on K92.3. Can I get a countdown? Can I get a countdown? Three, two, one. Yeah, that's right. It's Tuesday on Marks in the Morning. Welcome back. Happy, um, well, not Monday. That's good news. It is 45 degrees, going to hit that high today in the upper 50s a little bit later on, as Rebecca said. I think we should start the show with a little uh, little therapy here this morning. I know a lot, <laughs> a lot of people are sad and bummed out about yesterday's Iowa Hawkeyes game, which was really over before halftime, <laughs> after the first half. It was good the first 18 minutes of the game, and then yeah. Oregon went in like a 10 nothing run or something was, to end the first half. It got ugly. So this morning, if you need a little... A little motivation, especially it's dark right now. There's no sunshine. It's going to be a cloudy day, a rainy day. Just think about this. Cute kittens, happy puppy dogs, not the sad puppy dog eyes on your coworkers or your family, (laughs) just cute puppy dogs. How's that? Everybody feeling better? Well, on a happy note, the UNI Panthers women's basketball team is continuing on the postseason. There you go. They've won three straight now in the NIT, so they play Friday night. There's always that. There's always that. But let me just... (laughs) As a uh, recovering Minnesota sports fan, I'm used to this feeling. You know what we call it? Every day. (laughs) And we made predictions yesterday, and... Gary Mack said Iowa was going to win by like a thousand points. Yeah, yeah you were, but you she were, did get one of the scores correct. I I got eighty, and I'm very proud of yeah. that. Look at me, hire me to do all of your sports gambling. You did say Iowa would get eighty, and they did. They did, but unfortunately, the other team had ninety five. <laughs> it was a blowout. You got that right too. You just got it on the wrong side. Iowa losing by fifteen yesterday, uh. and you had him at eighty to forty four somehow. I had a good feeling about there being a bad game, so I guess that's a... You were right on that. You got that one. You were obviously just optimistically wrong as opposed to pessimistically wrong. Anyways, we'll move on. We won't uh, twist the knife anymore, but uh, there is a lot still to look forward to, and we've got a lot of it on our show. Mark's in the morning on K92.3. It's Tuesday. Today's the, um, I guess, what are we looking at? The 23rd, so one week... No, I'm sorry. One week and one day till the end of the month. I forget, March is 31 days, but we're almost there, almost to the end of the month. April is almost here, and of course, right away, the first weekend in April, you have Easter to look forward to, a.k.a. I can eat meat on Fridays again. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Carrie Mack did eat meat last Friday. Well, it's a it's a feast day, so you're allowed to feast on meat my, on that day. I asked my father in law this; he had no idea what that was. What yeah. did my mom make this up? Is my no, mom? We a- found it on Wikipedia, but okay. it, it doesn't say anything about being able to eat meat. This time of the year, with Easter approaching, I love the meat of chocolate bunnies. Oh, those oh. are good. Yeah, the- sometimes they have the innards of marshmallow. Mm. Oh, yes, the fleshy innards. <laughs> As a child, I was so confused what bunny rabbits were like inside. <laughs> Terrible like, reality when they my dad ran one over with a lawnmower. Well, how confusing are the Cadbury commercials, though? They have these chocolate eggs with a bunny in the commercial. I'm like, bunnies don't lay eggs. What, and they're they not don't? chocolate. They That's, don't? Rabbits don't lay eggs. No. That's and, crazy. And what comes out of rabbits, you do not want to eat. <laughs> they're definitely pellet-shaped, but yeah. yeah, you don't want those. <laughs> they look like tiny eggs, but they don't taste like them. Let me tell you, I... Uh, had a friend who tried it. Do, do I? Do, let me ask you this: Do you guys feel your soul being crushed? Yes, every time. <laughs> Most of the time, yeah. I wasn't finished. Oh, every time you get a work email, do you feel your soul being crushed? It depends on the work email. If it's from either of you, my soul is uh, enlightened and oh, okay. lifted Wait, up. Now I know you're lying. If I get the email from our from the inside of the office where it says you have a commercial to voice. Oh, yeah. I know that, what you're that one, then it's just like, ugh. Because that just adds on to the day and the things you have to do. I've heard JP yelling many a time from his <laughs> office when, it, when that no! email comes through. I'm not doing this. 51% of us say every time we get a work email, it crushes our soul. Not specifically from whom the email comes from, i.e. a boss or a coworker, simply... Uh, more than half of us say our soul's crushed every time we get a work email. <laughs> wow. Isn't that crazy? The top three email complaints people have about work emails are they're too formal. The email's too formal, so it makes it hard for them to figure out what to prioritize. Or it makes them feel less connected to their coworkers when they get an email. 
which is weird. I wonder why that would be. Maybe because the email less connected. Hmm. Oh, that's strange. because it's work. And you got to do something, and so you feel less connected as friends. I don't know. What if it was an email saying, "Hey, after work, beers were there," and like then you'd feel then rightly you're, connected. Then your soul isn't crushed. So <laughs> bad, is Half people say that they're sending fewer emails since the start of the pandemic last year and using other apps to communicate more. I would assume that's social media, probably. But there you go. I, if your souls feel crushed, guys, I'm sorry. I hope you don't feel crushed. But just for that, I'm going to send three or four emails in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> just, just to ask if it's crushed. Yeah. <laughs> Is it crushed? Oops, I spelled crushed wrong. Here's another email. <laughs> oh, I spelled spelled wrong. Here's the spelled with two L's. All right. I'm working on those right now. Random, <laughs> <laughs> random facts are coming up. And uh, I wins. I did some uh, digging on Google. Google has, uh, you can search, like, what's the most searched term in Waterloo and Cedar Fall, and you can do all that. And I, what I've done is I have searched for different arguments you may use Google to settle, and I found out the top arguments Iowans are going to Google to settle. Now, where we might differ from other states, and I didn't have time to dig into what other states are arguing about, I, I will give you a clue. One of these top arguments is weather related. So JP might be excited. Mm. I know you're kind of the weather guy on the show. You get very excited about weather stuff. Yes. Sorry. What, oh, what, was okay. the little nerd come you out of your some, mouth? Yeah, did you have some nerd in your throat there? That's no, there's okay. a nerd right in front of me. I have two of them, actually, <laughs> at my two and ten. Yeah, that's pretty much right on. Uh, so the, the one of the top arguments is weather-related. But what specifically are Iowans arguing about that we go to Google for for weather? We'll talk about it when we do Random Facts in seven minutes. Luke Bryan right now. This truck. So if you go to Google, and uh, by Google I also mean probably your Amazon Alexa or other tools to settle arguments. You're not alone. I can't crunch analytics from um, Alexa or other metrics, but I can use Google to find out what Iowans are arguing about most. And while this isn't like scientific, here's what I found. The number one argument is about weather and off air. These two actually guessed it. It's not that exciting. The number one argument in Iowa that we go to Google to settle is, is it going to rain today? Which means... We're probably arguing about what? Oh, it's going to rain today. No, it's not. Oh, it is. I heard Rebecca Kobelman say it was going to rain. Oh, I didn't hear that. And then you go to Google to settle it. Um, friendly reminder, you can go to Rebecca Kobelman's Twitter page to settle it. Where's my... I want some cash for that plug, Rebecca. <laughs> that, that's also a great opening line for conversation when you when you don't want the answer back. What is that called? Rhetorical question? Yeah. It's like when you meet someone like, hey, how's it going? You don't really want to know. You don't want to know. Yeah, but you also say, oh, nice day today. You know? Yeah, it is. It's just one of those quick <laughs> passing and passing things you mention to people. Yes, exactly. It, you're right. Weather is such a lazy conversation. It should never turn into an argument. Hey. <laughs> no, no. Love- not, not. You say, I'm a lazy conversationalist? Well, no. <laughs> I just mean like... Here's JP. You, he's our man. weather guy. He's also lazy because he talks about it all the time. Oh Have you God. noticed, though, people... <laughs> go people after who, him. Go off. People who love weather are always talking about it. Like yes. a meteorologist. I got Rebecca Copeland's a lot of fun, I'm sure. But on Twitter, that's all she talks about, right? That's, she knows what she's up to. She stays in her lane. Like some of the others, like Mark Schnackenberg. We like Mark a lot. He does weather for one of our sister stations, but he only talks about weather. And that's that's good, though, because I love it shows how passionate they are about their career choice. I you mean, it's, they're, they're not just doing it when they're on the air. It's it's two in the morning. They're still up talking about it. You think they run in, somebody runs into them at Fairway and they say, hey, you know, Mark, how's it going? They're not, the next words out of their mouth are going to be something about the weather. That would get annoying, yeah. And don't you think at some point they're going to just like, you know, grab the salami from their cart and whack the person be like you know what you want to know about the weather we have an app check it out it's free it's in your app store i would just have cards pass it out like oh yeah here's our app <laughs> today's weather yeah you, you have the app card and you write the current temperature on. <laughs> you know where i got that from the app you bozo <laughs> no, no, number two things that we argue about here in iowa uh, by the way the, when i googled the rain thing or found the rain thing was about 77 percent of google searches um, that asked about the weather were rain, not snow, rain. Historical events, politics, and then the year something happened. So, for example, oh, what yeah. year was John Wayne born or Ashton Kutcher or something like that? Spelling, which is my number one Google search, 
is uh, number five on the list. And then from there, they're not really Iowa-themed. What actor or actress starred in a movie? Uh, which artist sings a song? Blah, blah, blah. That sort of thing. Recipe ingredients rounded out the top ten. All right, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. We'll let Rebecca Copeland talk about the weather. We should have her <laughs> on sometime to talk about a fondue dish or something else. But for now, she'll stay in her lane. Elwin will talk news, and we'll get to that next. Hang on. I'm Carrie Andrew. The Minion should do an updated version of that song called She Kept the Hotel Key Card because you don't see too many keys. <laughs> Keys anymore. It's usually this, whoop, the swipe thing. Uh, a couple a couple summers ago, I want to say 2019, 2018, 2019, my wife and I went to uh, the nice Marriott up at the Mall of America. They didn't even give us a card. They asked if we wanted to save, I think it was like 2%, and you just use your phone. Bluetooth on the phone. You tap the elevator because you need a key to activate the elevator, and you tap the door. It was awesome because then you can have two cards, each phone. It was super cool. You can't lose anything. I think it was 2%. Not a huge, but it's free money, right? What if your battery dies on your phone and your charger's inside your room? <laughs> well, that's on you, man. <laughs> and then you can go down to the lobby and say, hey, I goofed up. And they say, okay, that'll be 2% charge. Or they'll say, all right, just scan your phone. I'm like, I can't scan my phone. It's dead. <laughs> I guess I hadn't thought of that. I guess but this doesn't work for JP no. in the world. <laughs> you have a spouse who uh, you know, use her phone to get in, in that case. But uh, there you go. Updated version of the song. I kept the hotel key card. Or it could be I kept the Airbnb key. Or I kept the bar code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Tuesday. Tuesday Blues Day is coming up after 7 o'clock on the show. If there's something that happened to you in the last week, a first world problem, and you know if you go to a coworker or even a spouse, they're going to say, well, that's such a first world problem. There's bigger issues. And then they'll judge you. Well, here on this show, we won't. We air out our uh, first world grievances at about 7.10 on Tuesday. So that's coming up. We do have a few from uh, the last few days that we've collected. You can tap the B on the radio button if you have the K92.3 app. By the way, if you have that, open it up, too, because um, we have a chat function. You can just tap message K92.3. I've got a question for you. I'm going to bring up before Tuesday Blues Day or right around there. We won't really spend a ton of time on it on the air, but I'm, uh, I saw something that I don't want to say it surprised me. I think it was kind of a cool thing. It was a candle that smelled like Iowa. They have one for all 50 states, and I'd give the company a shout-out, but off the top of my head, I can't remember the brand. So it smells like a pig farm? Well, and, well, I, that's it. I want to tell you what it smells uh. like. But before I do, I want to know from you. Actually, you can message now. We don't have to wait on this. If you're uh, up listening, I'll just read some of these back uh, a little after 7. What Iowa candle? What an Iowa candle should smell like? Now, JP mentioned pig, pig farm. Obviously, we have more heads of hogs than heads of men and women, right? That's well known. We have about 3 million people. A little more. Probably about 5 million hogs at any given time. What would an Iowa candle smell like? Now, would it, and I'll tell you what the actual candle smells like when we get there, but would it smell more like hogs or would it smell more like cornfields? Yeah. Uh, you could argue it could smell like soybeans a little bit, right? We have some Even soybeans. Even chickens, egg producing. We're a big right. egg producing state. Right. We're an AG and an EGG producing state. So could smell uh-huh. either, either uh, of those. Fresh morning dew. There you go. I like that. I dig that. Or if it's our news guy's office, Fresh Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> so what would an Iowa candle smell like? Open up the K92.3 app and tap the message button. What do you think it should smell like? I'll tell you, without giving it away, the candle's a little more politically correct than a hog farm. But, you know, that wouldn't be a... Well, it wouldn't be a great smell, but that yeah. wouldn't be a bad idea. The, the idea of these candles is they smell like home. So let's say you've moved to, I don't know, California... And all you're smelling is expensive perfume and Kardashian sweat. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to smell like Iowa again, uh, what would it smell like? Something I like this that. idea, though. I mean, yep. the smell of coming home. I like that. Yeah, it's a neat idea. I'm not trying to give the company a free plug. Clearly, I can't even remember the name of the company. But I'll tell you what the candle actually smells like. And I want to get your thoughts on what it should smell like coming up on the show in a little bit. And we'll see if you agree, if you agree with the, the sense they chose. All right, we'll be back before that with Nashville News and music from Brantley Gilbert. Do you have a tease for us, Carrie, on Nashville News? Yes, I do. All I can say about this is I knew it before anyone else did. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll find out in 10 minutes what she's talking about on Marks in the Morning. Here on the Mighty K92.3, the Cedar Valley's number one for new country. 709 Tuesday Blues Day coming up in about five minutes on the show. Uh, we got a lot of Tuesday Blues Day uh, messages that have been left over the last week. Just one came in this morning, too. Excited to hear those on the show in a bit. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this Iowa candle. 
Okay. Uh, Carrie Mack brought in one that she got in old wine in about a week or two ago. Yeah. But before we get to that, I asked you, what should an Iowa candle smell like? And Con, uh, that's the name that they've given us on the app, says fresh mowed hay. Oh, that's a fantastic smell. That would smell oh. essential Iowa, no doubt about it. Uh, Carrie's candle is not the same one. I went to the, I, f- I figured out where I got this from. It's homesick.com. There, I gave you a free plug, homesick. You can give me a free candle. <laughs> the Iowa candle, they have one for all 50 states. It's not just an Iowa company. Smells like this. Are you ready? Uh, it smells like, well, here's the description. Spacious skies, fret, fresh cut grass and hints of corn. A touch of bourbon melds with complex undertones. So the top notes, I feel like we're talking about a beer here. Yeah. This is a wine. I'm getting notes of uh, mm, yes, the I'm getting notes of grapes. Uh, it's got the top notes are bourbon, cream, and praline. The candle color is white, if that matters. The mid notes, what? I don't know what that means. Are butter, cedar wood, and musk. Butter is right on. I mean, I was yeah. the butter capital of the Midwest. Base notes are sugar, vanilla, and tonka bean. I have been a Midwesterner my whole life. I don't know what tonka bean is, so I had to Google that one. Isn't tonka a truck? Yes, <laughs> just more. It's tonka? spelled the same way. <laughs> A tonka bean apparently is a uh, tree in the pea family. What? So they're small. Yeah. That's that's fake. You're making this up. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I Googled it. We were just talking about that earlier. <laughs> it's native to Central and S- Central America and so- uh, South America. This yeah. has nothing to do with Iowa. It must just smell really nice with those other yeah. scents. There's no pork or bacon or, of any kind, but I guess when you think about it, like a bacon grease candle probably would just panic anybody who cooks in their home and thinking like, oh, no, I spilled grease somewhere. The only reason I can see you buying a candle that smells like bacon is if you're working at a county fair and you <laughs> want to, like, lure some people in. You know how they, like, uh, push out that popcorn scent at the movies? Yeah. Just, like, you might have some bacon on a stick or something. That's the only reason why oh, you should yeah. have bacon in a candle. I can see that. They should also include Iowa is the biggest egg producing state in the union they should add like a scrambled egg fried egg with bacon type scent in there no i agree they they could have done that but um give me another state and i'll tell you what it smells like i've got all 50 pulled up here uh, uh, let's do your home state of minnesota oh okay it probably uh, smells like crap <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, or losers oh. right because of the oh, minnesota Vikings. Like i just said it smells like crap even though we're in the <laughs> hog producing state here no the minnesota candle smells like Top notes, apple, maple, and clove. By the way, maple would work for almost any Midwest. Yeah. That would also work in Iowa. But it, Minnesota does have a lot of maple. Nutmeg, the mid notes. Nutmeg, cinnamon, and peppermint. And then the base notes are identical. Vanilla, sugar, and tonka bean. So that must just be generically what it is. <laughs> I think those uh, scents are just to like supplement the other scents. See, you guys should have... You, Minnesota's the home of 10,000 lakes. You yeah, should have should some sort of lake smell. Oh, lake uh, water? That's gross. I've, I've smelled plenty of lakes in my days. I've been in plenty of lakes, and I'll tell you, I don't want a candle that smells like him. Uh, mm, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Carrie's home state smells like butter, rum, and chocolate. Those are the top notes. Heck yeah. The mid notes are sweat. No. Hey. No. Hey, hey, don't come after me like that. I know I'm a sweaty person. <laughs> no, the mid notes are molasses, caramel, and maple. Ooh. And then the base notes are the same. I think all candles have the same one. Sugar, vanilla, tonka bean. So there's that. Oh, California gets two candles, a north and a southern, northern and southern California. Oh, uh, that's not fair. California should be two states. I'll say it now. Washington, D- <laughs> Washington D.C. has a candle. It smells like hot air and BS. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes. Actually, it doesn't, but no joke. It smells like concrete, moss, oh. amber, and musk. <laughs> Why? The concrete? I, concrete? I see that. It's a concrete jungle, but man, that's a... Morning Tuesday, Blues Day. What's got you feeling blue today? Cedar Valley. Yeah. Well... That makes me look stupid. <laughs> it's Tuesday, Blues Day. On Mark's in the Morning, your chance to uh, vent about a first world problem that otherwise you'd be shunned for venting about. Let's get into it. Anybody on the show got one to kick us off? I've got one. This Let's is hear. very first world. Okay. Uh, every th- And you guys can associate with this. Every three months in our company, we have to change our passwords. Mm-hmm. And whenever Email, I get... Right? Y- yeah, for anything that we do in the company. So uh, about 10 days out... And every day forward from that point, we get an email saying, hey, 
your password is going to expire in such and such days. And I get so anxious because you have to think of something new. You have to remember it. I always write it down, but there's going to be some point now, six weeks, where it's going to say, it won't let me log into something. It'll say, what was your last password? I'm like, I don't remember what my last password was. I, I, you know, I do think when it comes to security, I get it because we're a big, pretty big company. I, and when you get into one person's email, if they, if somebody were to hack one person's email, theoretically, they could get a lot of juicy information. But I do think that there are some sites, uh, like we have an HR website that's completely separate from our company. They have too much security. Like there's, if anybody <laughs> wants to strong arm my account that badly, go for it. I got nothing on there. It doesn't even show you your full social security. But I, I do get that, and you're right, and now I'm probably going to be due pretty soon for a password well, change. And you have to think of something you're going to remember. So, I mean, I, and you can't use your kids' names, you can't use your kids' birthdays, you can't use anything associated with that. So you have to come up with something so unique, which means I'm not going to remember it unless I write it down. I'm and guess. then I'll forget where I write it down at, and I'm just screwed. I'm going to guess your account probably has, or your password probably has the word Packers. <laughs> it did at one point, the, but then Cubs. I had to change it. Oh, no. <laughs> Cubs, what's Aaron Rodgers' number? Remind me, 11? 12. 12. Tw- okay. No, I think I just hit on somebody in the building's password, if not yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I get it, man. I get it. And you're right. I think Carrie and I, if we're not already, we'll soon be getting those emails. Time for a password update. <laughs> Carrie, what you got? Anything today? Um. Yeah, I, I do, actually. This has to do with uh, everyone always has meetings sometimes. I'm a huge fan of attending them and being attentive at them. Uh, yes. What? <laughs> what? No, one, no one likes going to meetings. I sometimes, sometimes I also <laughs> like to get work done in the middle of the meetings. What? Oh, I do that too. But, I'm doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> my family's trying to plan a vacation and my parents kind of settled on a place. And my dad is one of those guys who's like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? So in the middle of the meeting yesterday, he calls me up. Oh, he called you in the middle of the meeting? Yeah. Did he know you were in a meeting? Well, it was the time where I'm usually at work. So why would... (laughs) My dad has been retired for almost 10 years now, so... People who are retired are on a completely different time zone. Like, they're not even... The sun comes up and it's free game for... Everybody should be... Free just like them. It's on their schedule. It's never my schedule. Especially during COVID because they can't really do much. But yeah. I, I get you. So your dad just called you. He didn't. Why do people call people? <laughs> <laughs> Can we start there? What's so funny is my dad is almost deaf too. So he can't, like he calls me up ah. and he's like, "What'd you say?" And I'm like, "Dad, can you just text me?" If you ever hear Carrie yelling in the office, it's not. She's not mad. She's just on the phone with her dad. Yeah. <laughs> I said I'm working. What? <laughs> <sighs> Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but at the same time, that could come in handy as a lifeline if you ever want to get out of an awkward conversation. You just have to coordinate it with your dad to call you because you know it'll be a 10-minute conversation just to explain to him you're doing something else. Probably, probably. I get you, Carrie Mac. I get you. Yeah. All right, my Tuesday Blues Day. That was a long one. Wow. My Tuesday Blues Day is there are some times I buy potato chips I don't want to share with my wife. <laughs> okay? He sometimes he yeah. means all the time. I call, them, I call them my card chips. Oh. Carrie saw my card <laughs> chips yesterday because the bag was empty. Well, Fairway had a good spa- a sale, and I don't know if they still do, but it was on their brand of those um, kettle chips. And so I bought some. I bought some, but they, they were barbecue. <laughs> and driving one hand in the bag, I got barbecue sauce or that little powder all over my hands. And I got it yesterday on my nice white shirt. <laughs> I had finished the bag. I made it all the way to the end with no incidents. And then yesterday, I thought I had licked it all off my fingers. And I touched my shirt. And now there's barbecue powder. And I did spot clean it, Carrie. And it didn't come out. Carrie saw part of this because I met her up after work. And uh, she's like, oh, you got a bag of chips there, huh? I was like, these are my car chips. We don't talk about these. See, and as a dad, this is an easy, easy fix. Because yeah, I, do? You, you have wipes with you. When your kids are when you're when they're babies, you use wipes to you know clean the clean the area after they you know do the thing in the yeah, diaper. Yeah. But I've learned I've learned that even though my kids are long out of diapers, you still keep wipes in the car because kids are notorious for getting everything dirty, and wipes work wonders. And so are people sneaking chips. Okay, mm-hmm. it, it'll work. Trust well, me. I was just going to go back to buying the you know salt flavor, the the no flavor, but uh, I think I like your idea. But yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I should have bought two bags. And a Tide stick. I always have a Tide stick. Tide sticks are nice. I agree. I used to have one on hand, and I used it up pretty quickly. All right. Woo! Let's get to your messages. Tap the Be On The Radio button on the K92.3 app to be featured on a Tuesday Blues Day.
Let's see. Uh, okay, let's start with, again, you have to leave your name, too, otherwise it doesn't tell us who you are, unlike when you send us a message. So we'll start here on the first message. There's something that just drives me crazy. It's this whole revolution of checking text messages at red lights or stop signs or, or, or wherever. I mean, I swear, I wait at red lights trying to be a patient driver for, like, a good... 30 seconds, 45 seconds, while I can see, you know, the 16-year-old girl t- taking selfies and texting mm-hmm. on her phone. Then I finally honk my horn, and she flicks me off. Like, it's my problem. It just makes me crazy, and I swear they should do something where, like, you have Uh-oh. to check your phone Blood in like, the compartment in your car when you get in, so you're not checking at a stop sign, because I swear I've been late lately because of that. Yeah, I hear you, man. Well, not only that, it's illegal. You yeah. know, you, you can't text and drive. That doesn't mean when you're at a stop sign, you have time to check your text. You know, it's technically, you're right. You can't text and drive period uh i suppose if you were to pull over on the shoulder maybe nobody would give you guff yeah that's you, you, fine yeah. uh please don't ever text at a roundabout it's just not a good idea <laughs> especially when i'm coming through also i have a problem with him saying it was a girl taking a selfie i've seen all the guys at stoplights texting you all know, the time all the guys all the guys, not all all the guys, guys. but they're always guys whenever it happens to me uh, it's always a guy who's on his phone or taking a weird car selfie there are some weird car selfies out there. It's like the, the if you see a toilet in the background, that's a no-go. And if you see traffic in the background, that's a no-go, too. All right. Uh, will you, what do we got time for? One more. Here we go. Um, I hate it when I'm at the gym. And I'm not, like, some crazy, like, fitness guru. I'm just going to kind of stay in shape. And I feel like every time I go, the trainer is always like, oh, can I get you set up with, like, a session or a package that could really get you in better shape? And I feel like they're, like saying that I like am not doing things right like I'm just like I just want to run a couple miles on the treadmill I don't want to be like a bodybuilder and I can't like they won't let me like just do my thing yeah um, I can it. I concur with that too when I do go to the gym I've just I, I'm not there to get buff either. I'm just there so I don't die tomorrow. <laughs> I want to at least be in shape and see my kids grow up. <laughs> well, as a guy who uh, has a six-pack when he goes into the gym, <laughs> and it is a six-pack of beer, uh, I can understand, too. Uh, everybody's always looking at my six-pack of beer. I just have to say, this. I feel like it happens to guys sometimes, but for girls, it's always the same thing. People come over and try to mansplain exercising to do us. Do they? Yes, they do. They're like, oh, can I help you lift this, sweetie? Like, I was about to curse. Are you working, are you working out in the 1980s? Where are you going to work out? I guess I don't know, because I don't really, I keep to myself unless I'm taking a class. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I've had people explain to me that, both genders, how to use equipment, because I look like a deer in the headlights, <laughs> unless it's a treadmill. I learned very quickly when working out that you should only listen to music if you're mm-hmm. going to work out. Don't listen to stand-up comedians, <laughs> because if you're lifting weights and you start laughing, immediately everyone thinks you're laughing at them. Oh. So I had to stop doing that. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, That's, so That's why you should just whip out your K92.3 app uh-huh. and hit the Listen Live button. That's what you should do. And by the way, you're going to hear Parmalee next. Just the way with Blanco Brown and Gender Bender is 10 minutes away. Hang on. It's time to play Gender Bender on Marks in the Morning. Hey, Johnny Marks, who are our contestants today? Should be a fun round of Gender Bender this morning. Our contestants are Kennedy from Reedland. How are you, Kennedy? Good. And your opponent is Don from Fredericksburg. Don, how are you doing today? I'm all right. So glad to hear that. You're each playing for a couple freebies from McDonald's and a chance to win a year's supply of crispy chicken sandwiches. That's one a week for 52 weeks. Of course, the game is simple. You've both played before, but for anybody listening for the first time who's maybe going to play later this week or sometime yet this spring, it's simple. You are our first caller, right? First of your gender. Then you have to get more questions right than your opponent. Your questions are aimed at them and theirs at you. I have a tiebreaker here if we need it. Kennedy, you are our first caller today. So who's going first, you or Don? I'll go first. You're going to go first. Okay, before we start, we heard a, a kiddo in the background. Do you have a... Who's your cheerleader today? Charlotte. Charlotte. All right, good luck, Charlotte. She sounded young, but maybe she can blurt out an answer and help you out. You never <laughs> know. Uh, JP's got your questions. Good luck. All right, Kennedy. What do you call a baby deer? A fawn. A fawn, yes. Yep. Or I would have accepted my lunch next summer. <laughs> <laughs> or roadkill if you're over by Hartman Reserve. Man, those poor little guys and gals get run right. over all the time. All right, Kennedy, do my beloved Chicago Cubs play in the American League or the National League? Uh, the National. Absolutely. Yep. Congratulations. Kennedy, do you cheer for any baseball teams? Are you a big fan? 
No. <laughs> oh, well, then that's even more impressive. Well, now you can root for the Cubbies. How about that? <laughs> All right, Kennedy, let's go for three for three. What sport are you playing if you receive two minutes for cross-checking? Um, basketball. The correct answer is hockey. <laughs> if you cross-check someone with a hockey stick and basketball, I'm Ooh. sure they'd boot you from the game. I think, isn't that how LeBron got hurt last week? <laughs> he got oh, cross-checked. Geez. Uh, but that would have been, uh, what's cross-stitching? Is that something? <laughs> that's not hockey, though. All right, two out of three. That's a good score. Don's poised to beat it, though. Good luck. Carrie's got your questions. Do- uh, Johnny actually just mentioned sewing, so I feel like this is a good transition. Oh, there you go. In sewing, what do you call the place where two pieces of fabric are joined together? Seam? Yeah. Yep. Nice job, Don. He's one for one. I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm always surprised when the guys get things right sometimes. Hey, 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 hey. You're outnumbered here. Yeah, we're going to cross-check you. (laughs) With a hockey stick. Yeah. Okay, Don. Where would you use the product Cascade? Cascade. In the dishwasher. Yep. Yes. Nice job, Cascade. We've got a battle going today. Yeah, we have a tie right now, so if Don gets this right, he wins. Otherwise, we'll go to a tiebreaker. Okay, Don. The Academy of Country of Country Music Awards is happening on April eighteenth. Can you name one of the two hosts for the ACMs? Blake Shelton. No, uh, Keith Urban or Mickey Guyton. Mm. And Keith Urban hosted last year, I believe. Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll go to a tiebreaker, and whoever is closest to the actual answer will win. This one is not a percentage-based one, but in honor of uh, women's, is it Women's History Month? Is that the right term there, Karen? Yeah. Well, let's highlight moms. A new study finds uh, some interesting details about moms. The average mom, mother, ends her day at what time? Whoever's closest will be our winner. At what time? Does the average mother end her day? Don, do you want to take a shot at this first? Oh, all right. I'll say 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Okay, Kennedy, what do you think? Um, 10.30. 30. 10.30. Uh, well, according to the study... The answer is 8.30, so Kennedy was a little bit closer, but we uh, this study has moms, by the way, this was done by Welch's Grape Juice, if you need a reference on that. Has moms going to bed before 9? That doesn't sound right. No, it? not at all. No, or at least their day is done. That's when you break out the wine, not the grape juice, and uh, I guess talk about your day. Kennedy, you are our winner today. Don, you're more than welcome to call back and try again tomorrow, okay? All right. Congratulations, Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. Talk to you very soon. Hey, Kennedy, what are you up to? Are you going to work right now, or what you got today? Dropping off my daughter at daycare and then going to work. All right. Well, we know at about 8.32 tonight, you'll have all the time in the world to yourself, at least according to the study. <laughs> so we'll think about you then. And in the meanwhile, we'll give you some free Good morning and happy Tuesday, the 23rd of March. Just about a week and some change left in the month. And then we're off to April. So we're getting spring showers. Rain here in the next hour or so. Maybe raining already where you're listening. Um, but uh, April showers, we get April showers by April. We're going to have trees, right? This rain keeps up. No snow in the forecast, but rain the next couple days. i got to give a shout-out to Bob. Bob just uh, messaged us on the K92.3 app. we got our gas spies out there. Bob's one of them. Super unleaded gas, two fifty seven a gallon at the Fleet Farm in Cedar Falls. That's a good price. Yeah. It's over, what, by Highway 20 down uh, in Cedar Falls? So that's the cheapest. And, and actually, shout out to Bob. I was trying to see if I could find anything cheaper. I can't. I can't find anything cheaper than that. I found a couple places at $1.63. $1.63? I'm sorry, $2. $2. Oh, $2. Johnny. Did I, give you a... I was going to leave the studio and fill up. <laughs> hey, you and everybody else. My heart. Jeez. Uh, I don't think we'll get that low again for a while, but. Two sixty three is about as cheap as I can find. Uh, the, the love's over by the old Greyhound track. This is going to make me sound insanely old. No, I'm so I'm going to preface it. I'm only forty two. Okay, but when I first got my license when I was sixteen, gas was eighty three cents a gallon. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Did they have the bottom cut out of it so you can just like run instead of using an engine? You like mean a, like Fred Flintstone? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming that's how old you are, right? <laughs> <laughs> Should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Carrie likes to give me a hard time about my age. If Carrie didn't work here, I'd be the youngest person in this building. 
So JP would technically be right behind me. That's that's a good point. Yeah. 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 The months between you not being here and being here, I was the youngest person here. And that includes all of our sales, HR, et cetera, et cetera. I never thought of it like that. That yeah. would make me the second youngest, exactly. excluding Carrie. Yeah. I'm the second youngest male in the building. The youngest two on uh, local morning shows here in this building, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Carrie gives us a hard time just because she's 27 years younger. I'm just saying. Give or take. I have to call it the fossils when I see them. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that it? By the way, if you were 27 years younger than me, you'd be nine. So that'd kind of be weird. <laughs> Probably be a very bizarre morning I, show. Here's your sippy you, cup. I don't think you can legally hire a nine-year-old to get up at four in the not, morning. And- not during school hours either. <laughs> I still need a nap at some point, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. You have a, you didn't put that in my contract, and I've been really trying to work it up to tell you that. What would you like to talk about today? Grape juice. <laughs> the you saw. Fruit snacks. <laughs> It would be a good segue into our Student of the Week award, wouldn't it? By the way, we will have another Student of the Week later this week. Sam was our winner last week, our first high school Student of the Week. Uh, yeah. I think he goes to Waterloo East. You can read about him on our K92.3 app. We'd love to take in uh, your nominations right there on the app. Just tap Nominate Student. And our winning students each week, and their parents for that matter, get a uh, free meal at the Screaming Eagle right here in downtown Waterloo. And the uh, kiddo gets to play skee ball while they eat. Or in the case of Sam, he probably doesn't want to be called a kiddo. I think he's a senior or a junior. Uh, he, Mr. Sam gets to play ski ball. I would rather play ski ball and watch my kids eat. Yeah, I would do. Now that you mention it, it's definitely not a prize that's just for kids at all. I mean, ski ball is fun for adults. So um, nominate your student today on the app. We'll go right on through to the end of the school year. And they also get a certificate in the mail. All right, we're going to go on Facebook Live here in just a couple of minutes because uh, a lot of people get their stimulus money. If you haven't already, you'll be getting some. Could vary person to person. But I think the average citizen or resident of uh, Iowa will get 1400 So what are you going to do with it? Spend or save? We talk about this. Mark's in the morning. We are on Facebook Live. You can go to our Facebook page right now and jump in. Facebook.com slash K923Waterloo. Check us out there. It's 815 uh, right now. If you are watching this later on, then, well, that's the time we did this. 815 on Mark's in the morning. Hey, before we get started talking about something very happy, free money, let's talk about let's talk about how you're doing this morning after the Iowa Hawkeyes game yesterday. First, nobody got any work done because the game started around 11-something and spanned lunchtime. Yeah, and you scheduled a meeting during the game. Well, it wasn't my fault. We always have that meeting <laughs> at that time. It was the Hawkeyes' fault. Then, after the game was over, everybody was depressed and bummed out. I actually saw a man tear up his Iowa Hawkeyes t-shirt walking down the street, and he had an unflattering belly, so it was a loss for all of us. Oh, was no. it our production director, Sean? Yes. Well, no. Oh. <laughs> He's got a much nicer belly, I would assume. So if that's you, if you're very sad this morning, just take take comfort in knowing I'm a Minnesota sports fan, and I live with myself every day. I haven't had a good team, or besides the Twins, they're okay, but they never go anywhere in the playoffs. They haven't won a playoffs game since, what, 2003? So there, how does that but feel? the Minnesota Vikings have been to four Super Bowls. Yes, they have. They, and they've been to a lot more as spectators. And they haven't ever won a Super Bowl, though. <laughs> Sorry to remind you of that. Yeah, I know. All I'm saying is that all of us should just be Syracuse sports fans because they're making it into the tourney. The women are playing against UConn tonight. I'm so excited. They're going to get crushed by UConn. Yeah. Yes, but also I believe in Syracuse. I believe in Syracuse. Uh, JP, closer to home, the UNI Panther women's basketball team is in the NIT tournament, and they won the other night, right? They they won last night. They're in the final four of the WNIT. They play Ole Miss on Friday. That's right. We're going to beat them so bad they're going to wish New Miss would come and save the day. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Okay, let's get into this. We, uh, If you haven't already, you're going to be getting a stimulus check worth $1,400 or more if you have uh, kids like JP. JP got $800,000 just because he has so many kids. That we know so him. much money, I so had to open money. up four separate bank <laughs> That's accounts. Right. And the kids get none. But most people are going to get about 1400 So here's the question. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Are you going to save that money? Or are you going to turn around and spend that money? A lot of people probably, as we're coming on, hopefully to the backside of COVID, maybe want to plan a family vacation. Maybe you want to make a car payment. You've been behind on your car payments. Or maybe you really want to put the money away and have it grow in an account somewhere, like a savings account or even throw it in the stock market. What are you going to do with your money? You can start with anybody in the room here. We all three have gotten our our, uh, government bucks. So anybody have anything that they're doing with theirs? I kind of want to get a nose piercing. What? 
Yeah, I kind of want to get a nose piercing. Do you have ear piercings? I did, but they closed up. Wow, wait a minute. So you don't have ear piercings technically anymore, but you want to get your nose done. Isn't that a septum piercing? Is that what it's called? I think the septum is like the bull situation. Oh, you don't yeah. want to do the bull? I just want a little stud right here. No, do the septum. Yeah. What? No, I can't do that. I want the the little side piece right here. Well, you wouldn't be able, if you did do the septum, you wouldn't be able to dig, though. I mean, if you're trying that's to true. dig under a fence, Ew. that's the whole point of it. Yeah. And they put them on the hogs. Oh, that's, that's right. gross. Yeah. And you wouldn't be able to dig with your finger either. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I wasn't going the bull way. Hmm. Carry with a... A little, what is that called when it's just right here? Not a the, stud. It's a that's stud. That's a stud? You carry with a little stud. You, you wouldn't do the ring? You would just do the stud? I don't know. I, I, I'm I, really bad with commitment, so I'm very torn <laughs> about doing this. But I really kind of want to just make one of those purchases that kind of changes me forever. Do you remember when those used to be so taboo and employees at certain businesses would have to put a Band-Aid on as if that wasn't worse? You'd have a giant nose Band-Aid as opposed to just having the little piercing? I, maybe they're still taboo in some places. but I don't... <laughs> I'd be more concerned about the band, especially if you worked in food service. Yeah. If you were to be more concerned about the Band-Aid, the Band-Aid falling out, the nose, nose ring's not right. going to fall out if you put no. it in correctly. I mean, if it's loose. And if it does, you swallow it, you wouldn't even know it was there. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I've heard of people <laughs> sneezing it out. <laughs> That's a goal for you if you get one. <laughs> JP, how about you with your government bucks? What are you going to do or what have you done? Uh, with my Biden bucks, I'm going to quit my job and, okay. and, and go into my lifelong passion of Sasquatch hunting. Oh, jeez. I think that was the guy we saw tear up his Hawkeye shirt. <laughs> You're gonna no, I, I have no plans for it. I'm just going to bank it. Okay. Yeah. That's what we've done. Uh, I, I took about half of it and put it into my own bank account, and we left the other half in savings that I did. And I actually used it and paid a little extra on my car payment. And then I regretted it as soon as I hit the button because I have an app where I pay it. And I was like, oh, was that really smart? I paid an extra 200 on the car payment, and I thought... Man, I could have bought a lot of fun crap with that, but it's too late now. So I'd say I was half responsible, and we are saving. One of the reasons we put it in savings is for a little trip once we uh, are comfortable doing that again. So Yeah, you're going to Evansdale, I believe? Yeah, we're going to Evansdale. Nice. It's a beautiful city. Yeah. Uh, you know, It's only about a 10-minute drive. So You'll save uh, gas money that way. That's right. Yeah. Well, actually, we're going to hike there. Oh, even better. You could bike <laughs> it, yeah. You can't make those jokes. I still don't understand the layout of the land here. <laughs> well, Evansdale is, like, seriously 10 feet from Waterloo. So. <laughs> 10 feet, exactly. It's in the same school district, <laughs> yeah. so that should give you a clue. All right, what about you? What are you doing with your cash? It's Mark's in the Morning on K92.3. We have a lot of people on um, Facebook. I can't see the Facebook Live. I mean, you probably can't see me either. But the you put this up on Facebook. What are some people saying they're doing with their money? And I guess I can pull it up, too. Well, let me check right here. From what I see, people are saying, hi, Carrie. Yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's someone's birthday. Um, Amanda says she hasn't gotten hers yet. Um Kalissa said, saving part for vacation and the other part having my car worked on. I think that's pretty valid. Save some, spend some. Yeah, if you've had a nagging car necessity, yeah. then this is a good time to do it. You know? Because that is never cheap, nope. fixing a vehicle. How about you? It's Mark's in the morning. Hi, who's this? Hey, Johnny, it's Landon. Hey, Landon, do you have a plan for your government cheese? Yeah. Give it all to my girlfriend. Give it all to your girlfriend. Oh, ah, yeah. Well, she's a lucky lady. Um, yeah, something like that. Are, are you in the doghouse, Landon? Is that why you? <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> What'd no, you take she off? just deserves it. She likes to go shopping, so I'm hoping I get something out of it. <laughs> well, tell her what you like when she goes shopping. I couldn't. My naive mind couldn't possibly wander from there. Well, with my luck, it's just going to be a candy bar. Oh, that's, hey, that's it's, one more than you had before. Yeah, exactly. That is true. All righty, Landon. Remind everybody, where are you calling from? Applington. Applington. All right. All the shops up in that area, look out. Landon's girlfriend's got some extra money. Thanks for your call, buddy. Have a great day. We appreciate it. What are you going to do with your extra money? You can keep chiming in. We'll stay on Facebook Live here for a little bit. Maybe you blew it all, betting on the Hawkeyes yesterday. <laughs> Ooh, I hope not. Uh, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. This is the Cedar Valley's number one for new country. Okay, a follow-up. It's not 5 o'clock somewhere, but I did find out at uh, 9 o'clock our time. So in 30 minutes, it'll be 5 o'clock p.m. in Moscow. Okay, so there you go. I feel like I had to circle back on that as a bit of education. Probably the last thing the kids will hear from me if they have school coming up here in the next few minutes. What time do your kids start in the morning? I'm all confused on when kids start school. 8, 10, I oh, want to so say. So they're already in there. Yeah. 
Oh, I thought you said eight or ten. I was like, yes, no. Whenever they wake up. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Mike's in the morning on K92.3. Jeopardy has a new guest host this week. It's Dr. Oz. Ugh. Things might get a little awkward when he tries to sell him on that aloe vera brain booster, but otherwise, you should be an interesting host. Didn't Aaron Rodgers just host, or is he not he, hosting? He will that? in April next oh, month. Oh, it hasn't aired yep. yet? Who was it, Katie Couric? Who was the last host? I know Katie Couric was, I thought she was going to be one. I think she's going to be one, but the what that like all-time Jeopardy winner was the host for a few weeks. Ken Jennings. Yeah, oh, Ken, Ken Jennings. Jennings. That's right. He did and it for a while. He was really good at it, too. I would love to see him be the permanent host. I yeah. heard rumors that he's going to be the, the main host. Wouldn't it make sense? Because Alex Trebek, everybody loved Alex Trebek. He was so, such a great host, but he was also very... Smart, like he, he. Whenever somebody got one wrong and or nobody buzzed in, he'd always look up with the end. He never looked at a sheet. Now he probably had it in front of him, but he never was like, oh, uh, you know. He'd always be like, well, no, it's the Sudanese or whatever. Yeah, he <laughs> never mispronounced anything. No, he, like and, you said, yeah, he knew it. Did he read those questions? I know the show didn't air live, but did he read those questions as it was taped, or did they go back and voice them over later? Do you think he could have? Because you only see him, you don't yeah, see the contestants. You never watch him read. Anything. That's a good point. If anybody's ever been to a taping of Jeopardy and or on the show, obviously you'd know then too. Tell us if Alex Trebek or whoever the host is now uh, stands or sat. I think he in the later years he was sitting at his podium. If he reads them in real time, or if he, you know, just kind of sits there while the contestants read them off the screen. Somebody had to read them. Yeah. Because then you'd have to know when to buzz in. I would I would assume that it was how we see it. That's how I imagine think so? it. Yeah. I don't think they ever did voiceover. Like if he botched a word. How could all those seasons he not have screwed up a single word? It's not like he would have had time to rehearse or memorize any of those questions. He probably has, but I think the what they expect to happen is exactly what we see. And maybe he even preps beforehand, like we prep for our show. Oh, we that's do? what we're doing. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> it's usually when we sit around and discuss which condiments we hate. Mayonnaise, anybody? Where's the coffee? Yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. That's interesting. I wonder uh, how that's done. Uh, it's Mark's in the morning. It's K92.3. You know whose birthday it is today? This is a blast from the past. JP will know right away who this is. Carrie will not. And if you do, I'll be shocked. John Wayne Bobbitt. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> do you know that? Carrie, you have to know this story. I don't even want to... I know John Wayne. Yeah. That's the when, what, this was about the turn of the century, late 90s? Yeah. Like, I'm not even... It was in the 90s because I remember Weird Al Yankovic parodied uh, his <clears throat> situation. Uh, should we go into quick detail so Carrie knows what yes, happens? I, here's it. Here's I'll, the let, way... I'll, I'll let you do it, Johnny. If you don't remember John Wayne, Bob, it's okay. His career was cut short. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. It was in 1993. I did a quick oh, Google of this. So almost 30 older. years ago. He uh, fell asleep, and <laughs> uh, he, uh, his wife, he was, was, he was abusing his wife, I believe, and she cut off a certain part of his body. <gasps> I'm and, surprised you haven't heard this And story. then she drove down the road and threw it out the window. She bobbed it. She did. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, had a good old jump shot out the window. Well, he's 53 today. So there you go. Or 26 and a half. Really? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, didn't, she didn't cut him in half. <laughs> he probably felt like it. Oh. <laughs> Took 20 years off his life. Moving along, another birthday today. Iowa native from Winthrop, actress Michelle Monaghan celebrating a birthday. Oh, she good. is 45 today from the movie Pixel. She was in a few Mission Impossible movies. Yeah, I haven't heard that name in a while, but I know who exactly who you're talking yep, about. She is 45 today. She's got a lot of family in the area, too. Well, happy birthday to her. Sorry we segued from John Wayne Bob, John Wayne Bob into I, your I family. tried to get us quickly off that subject. Uh, who else has a birthday today? Brett Eldridge, the country singer. We love Brett Eldridge. Uh, any guesses on Brett's age? I'll give you a clue. He's above 30 and below 40, so he's somewhere in the 30s. What do you think? 39. 34. 35. Ugh. So he'd love you, JP, and Carrie would be all sorts of mad about that. I'm really bad at finding out men's ages. I just think that guys are either like 20 years older than they actually are or 20 years younger. Well, let's go with younger. You'll flatter a lot of people yeah. if you say younger. I'll try. I'll try and do that. One now. of your favorite actresses, Carrie Russell, celebrating her birthday today. She's not my favorite. We just share a name. Oh, well, never. I take that back then. It's not her birthday. <laughs> I do love Carrie Russell. <laughs> Maybe you were thinking of me. Oh, yeah. She was in that movie, The Waitress, which uh, was one of her more recent ones with Madlock. What's the guy's name? The real the actor that played Madlock? You know, Andy, Andy Griffith. Griffith? Yeah. It was a really good movie. 
She was also in the Mickey Mouse Club with Christine Aguilera, Justin Timberlake. Jerry Russell all was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're all about that age now. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. She was in that most recent Star Wars she, she movie. She was in Star Wars. Oh, That's I forgot right. forgot about that. Such a beautiful, talented actress. They put her in a mask. I love that. Love I love that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll be back in just a couple minutes on Marks in the Morning. It is 836. We got to go. We got to get to news and weather. in the morning on K92.3. It's 10 minutes after 9 o'clock. Uh, who's left in the uh, NCAA tournament? Sweet 16. Who cares? That's what I say. <laughs> Who cares? Everyone's bracket is busted. Yeah. Kansas lost yesterday, huh? Yeah, I had them going quite far, too. I should have known that all the big schools, except for Syracuse, I mean, they were a lower seed this year, though, but all mainly all the big schools that have history with the NCAA tournament, gone. Villanova's out, too, aren't they? Uh, I don't Wild remember. Cats? Yeah, I think they lost. I thought they did. They're another team that could easily go all the way. No, maybe they're not. No, they're not out. I take that back. They are still in. I think I'm going to make them my pick to win. They you play can't, Baylor. You can't pick the brackets now. It's done. Oh, you no, have to I, do it before the game starts. Let me tell you, when you're sports betting, you can oh, yeah, well, you can, yeah. You can predict any time you want. Then In fact, you, can. you should wait. <laughs> you could even make bets during the game. <laughs> That's right. And I might have done that. Uh, but so there you go. That, that could happen. Baylor could still win. But, yeah, the Big Ten's pretty much done, isn't it? See, I still have a chance because I have Arkansas winning it all. And Is Arkansas, that who you put in your bracket? Yeah, Arkansas still go. They're about the only team I have left. Oh. So if they win the whole thing, I, I might win something. We had an internal, like an office one, which I didn't participate in this year. Is that the one that you've got them going? Yeah, and that's Sean emailed everyone this morning saying that's the only way I have a chance to win. If Arkansas wins the whole thing, I will win. Well, I'm I'm rooting for you, my friend. I Thank hope you. you do win because Carrie and I are not participating. What? You're not who are you rooting <laughs> she wants for? Syracuse. Syracuse. Well, you could at least root for JP to it, do well. In a real world battle, who would win between a Razorback and an orange? <laughs> Depends. Are we throwing the orange at the Razorback's face? <laughs> well, the Razorback would then eat the orange. They could slip on the orange peel. They could get some of the orange juice in their eye. Oh, that would sting. A little citrus in the it's eyeball. It's funny how this turned into a naked gun routine. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's a National Egg Week nationwide. But, of course, here in Iowa, that's a big deal. National Egg Week is... We've got a lot of info on our K92.3 app if you want to know what it's about. But today is Tuesday... AKA National Agriculture Day. So as it's Ag Week, today is specifically National Agricultural Day when producers, agricultural associations, corporations, universities, government agencies, and others recognize and celebrate the abundance produced and provided by agriculture. If you want more information, go on our K92.3 app. But if you're tweeting today if about it or even on Facebook, use the hashtag Ag Day, A-G-D-A-Y. And uh, show your support to our area farmers, of which you don't have to go far to find in K-Country. You, uh, I don't know if this was like, uh, is this kind of like where you grew up, Carrie, where you drove about five miles out of town and there were already fields, corn fields, bean fields, etc.? No. Probably not, right? <laughs> I think that's very unique wait, to the Midwest. Wait till the fall. Well, even in the spring, in the planting season, if you're out and about on just like a county highway, you'll be behind tractors. All oh. over. And in the fall, you'll be behind the combines where it's hard to pass. This is an Iowa thing. That's awesome. Oh, mm-hmm. that's great. I'm excited to be caught behind a tractor one day. It, you well, will. It'll you, happen. You Inevitable. Or a combine. You know, you've got to be careful, though, because a lot of people try to pass them, and you don't see oncoming traffic. So be sure you're safe when you pass the tractor. We'll talk about that in the fall. We're mm-hmm. not quite there yet. Although spring planting season, you'll see. You won't see combines, but you'll see other big vehicles in the what not out. Uh, but yeah, happy National Egg Week. We all know in this area, you either know somebody, you've worked on a farm, you're related to, you yourself are a farmer. So uh, National Egg Week uh, 2021 is underway. And again, we have more on our app. All right, JP, give us a tease. We've got Weird News Rodeo and about two songs. What do we got today? Uh, we're going to go to the state of Florida once again because yes, that's are. just full of great stories. But it's about... Um, a woman at a fast food restaurant who may have been drinking, and what she was hiding is the key to this story. It sounds like a very happy meal. <laughs> we'll find out in about. Here's a daily weird news story from our uh, weird news maven, James Patrick. Maven, uh, yeah, I like you, that. Yeah, I always want to pump you up because you complain about how your segments don't have music. Although this one does; it's had its own theme music since <laughs> forever. Well, I've got a whip. I've got Howard Dean. Yeah. I've got circus music. This makes up for everything. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, Howard. I'll even give you one of these as we find out what is your weird news story today. Is that a drum roll? Yeah. 
Florida police responded to a 911 call about a drunk woman that was driving all over a McDonald's drive thru. Oh, no. So when police showed up, they found the 31 year old eating a cheeseburger in her SUV and she just reeked of booze. After refusing to perform sobriety tests, the woman was handcuffed, placed in the, in the squad car. On the way to jail, she was shouting, just take me home. Let's just, <laughs> let's just forget about this. Just take me home. Well, they didn't take her home. They took her to jail. And police discovered an eight-pack of vodka hidden in her bra. Wait how, do you, how do you hide an eight-pack of vodka in your bra? Let's, Carrie, I'm looking at you because Johnny and I don't wear bras. Let's back up. Where, what is an eight-pack of vodka? Yeah, I'm what? assuming it's got to be the like the little bottles. shooter bottles. Yeah, yeah those, shoot, those shooters, you can but hide still, them. Yeah, one or two. She had eight. Well, if you maneuver things correctly, see, it can get done. See, I, I wouldn't know about this. That's why I was looking for you yeah. for guidance. So she you was, think you could do it? I, I'm not going to place any bets, but I feel like I could hide a few <laughs> bottles here. But I, I like how she was using her bra as like a holster for her bottles. She was. She, I mean, just if she emptied one, she'd just reach in and grab another. This would be smart at a party, but not so much no. at a drive through or in a car. I know that there are brassieres where you can hook it up so it's like one of those uh, 10-gallon hats or whatever where you have the beer coming down with the funnel. Uh, yeah. You can do that with bras, I heard. Or uh, not, like, you have to buy one specifically. Yeah, maybe I'll get a bra. So <laughs> drink alcohol more smoothly, I suppose. This woman was arrested for DUI. Well, you know what? Give her some credit for some ingenuity there. She was able to cram a whole lot more in there than uh, most people would imagine. And aren't they called cups? I mean, they're called that for a reason, aren't they? Is, is, that, her, <laughs> is that her, like, shopping bag when she goes to the store? She oh, just, gee. I mean, she could put <laughs> celery. Hey, and... Would you like a bag? No, I'm good. I got one. <laughs> Got a bra. She'd do well at Aldi. They don't give you a bag. There you go. <laughs> I mean, her carbon footprint is being yeah, reduced by, right. a, yeah. by a large amount. She's probably reusing those little mini liquor bottles, too, right? She's got to put her, I don't know, what, she get her Coke at McDonald's or something and throw that in there. Just put it right in your place. No, the Sprite. <laughs> Thank you. It's clear. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes on Mark's In the Morning. Now you're making me hungry. Not, I don't want vodka. I want a cheeseburger. It sounds really good. We'll be back in just a few. Uh, Justin Moore, appropriately, Why We Drink is coming up next, along with new music from Tim McGraw on Undivided. Hang on. This is Kelsey Brown. In the Morning on K92.3, 936. It's Tuesday. Uh, Rebecca Copelman saying uh, mid-50s today for a high rain in the forecast. That's kind of the story of the week. Rain the next couple of days before it goes away. We should have a nice weekend at least. Something to look forward to. I know a lot of people are bummed out today. No Iowa Hawkeyes basketball. Uh, the men's anyway. When do the women's play? Do we know? Uh, they play today at 2.30, I believe. I'm checking right now. Dun, dun, dun. The Iowa Hawkeyes men's team knocked out yesterday against uh, the Ducks of Oregon. The Iowa women play against the Kentucky Wildcats at 2.30 this afternoon. Oh, there you go. Okay, good luck to them. You and I, women's uh, Panthers basketball team. Advancing in the NIT tournament as well. And Iowa State women won last night as well in the big dance. I forgot they have anybody there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the men, they did much better than the men this they year. They did. Mm-hmm. They did. So there you go. That's uh, still a lot to look forward to from the state of Iowa. But if you are feeling bummed out, I would I want to give you an, ant- an anecdote here. I will call it a joke, if you will. that will cheer you up. Are you guys ready? Sure. So a couple years ago, a friend of mine asked me to house sit for him. He and Uh-oh. his girlfriend went uh, on vacation. So I said, yeah, I'll come. I'll stay at your house. And before he and his girlfriend left, he told me the two important rules of the house. They have a cat, and the, their elderly grandmother lives there with them. Well, of course, she wasn't going on the trip. She was staying behind. So I had to make sure the cat got fed and didn't get out. It wasn't supposed to go outside, much like my cats. They're indoor. This was an indoor cat. And, uh, and the grandma be fed and everything be taken care of, right? So the cat and grandma had to be fed. <laughs> I said, I can handle that, buddy. So he and his uh, girlfriend took off. I think they went to Cancun or something. And uh, I was watching the house. And they called me the first day. They were going to be gone for about three or four days. They called me the first day. They said, how's everything going? I said, everything's fine. Except the cat got out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> on the first day. On the first day. First and they, day. They said, well, where's the cat? And I said, it's on the roof. What? I'll get it down. My cat's gone on the roof before. So they said, oh, fine. We'll call you back tomorrow. My buddy said, I'll call you back tomorrow. Next day comes. But he calls me back. He says, how's the cat? Uh, and I said, well, that cat's still on the roof. Um, I'm, I'm working on it, right? I had to get the cat off. I said, fine, whatever. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Called me back the next day. He says, well, how's the cat? And I, and I told him the truth. The cat was dead. 
Cat was dead. Oh, my God. No gosh. more cat. What happened? Uh, cat didn't make it. So he says, you told me the first day the cat was on the roof. And it was probably dead. And then the second day you told me it was on the roof and it was probably dead. Why didn't you just tell me it was dead the first day? And he said, how's my grandma? And I said, well, she's on the roof. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I fell for that one. Oh, oh, man, I was biting hard on that. Oh. I was starting to wonder, though, when you said <laughs> when the cat ended up being on the roof for two days straight, I'm like, why didn't you just crawl up and get it, Johnny? <laughs> right. He's a what? Can you imagine me on the roof? Come on. <laughs> Jeez. Anyways. Uh. That's, uh, All right. That did cheer me up. Good. Good. I yeah, hope you feel too. better. I hope you feel better. I'll be telling a lot of those during Viking season. This coming year. <laughs> Brian Twins. It'll be the same joke in the fall. <laughs> yeah. So let me tell you about a friend I was house sitting. All right. Uh, we'll be back to wrap things up. Here's what's coming up. It's uh, our last segment of the day, Nashville News with Carrie Mack. Carrie, do you have a sneak peek, a tease for us, if you would? Yes, I do. This is my uh, future Christmas or birthday gift. Ooh, so. Okay, we'll take notes. We'll take notes. We'll find out what it is and what it has to do with Nashville News. Coming up next, Carrie Underwood on the way, too.